Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Shannon and today I'm bringing you guys my birthday vlog. Yes, you heard that right. It is my birthday this weekend. It's on July 3rd, which is a Saturday. And I'm actually filming this clip a few days before because I doubt I'll have time at the weekend to start this vlog. So I'm just gonna do it now. I'm actually turning 22 this year, which I don't know how I feel about. It feels a bit strange to be honest with you, but I cannot wait to blast Taylor Swift's 22 all over the place. I have also decided to go home to celebrate my birthday. So that means I will be at my mum and my stepdad's house. Last year I did turn 21 during lockdown. Luckily it was right at the end of lockdown as restrictions were easing so I did manage to see my family and even though it was a completely different birthday to what we had planned it was honestly such an amazing day and I feel like this one's going to be quite similar in the fact that we're not really planning on doing anything extravagant obviously restrictions are still in place and so there isn't much we can actually do so I think I'm just going to have a very chilled weekend with my family we'll probably have a few drinks we'll probably have a few takeaways but that will probably be it to be honest with you I'm so sorry if my camera is shaking by the way my dog is currently walking around the room and every time she comes close to the camera it shakes so sorry about that I do feel like I rambled on though so I probably won't chat for too much longer but as I said I did just want to make sure that this vlog actually had an introduction because I know it's going to be heavy on b-roll footage my family do know that I film videos and that I post videos on YouTube and stuff like that but I do still feel a little bit awkward filming in front of them and not only that I am trying to be more in the moment so I don't want to whack out a camera every time something happens in my life because I feel like that will take me out of the moment because I will be so focused on recording recording it if that makes sense. So I am going to film where I can. I'm honestly not sure how this vlog's going to turn out but I'm hoping you enjoy it nonetheless and if you do please do leave some birthday emojis down below for me and maybe let me know when your birthday is as well. Other than that though I'm going to leave you guys here. I'm not sure when I'll next update you. It will either be on Friday or Saturday depending on when I actually have time to sit down and film a little clip for you guys. But without further ado let's just dive into the birthday celebrations. It's my birthday! Hello everyone, I know I haven't updated in a while. Honestly, last night was a bit chaotic. I came home from school. I opened my presents off of Tom, which you will have seen, and then we came to my mum's house, which is where I am now, which is why it looks very, very different. Also, because I'm at my mum's house, you will probably hear a lot of background noise, so I'm sorry about that. Hopefully it's not too distracting, but I did just want to film this little update before I went ahead and opened the presents off of my mum and my stepdad and the rest of my family. But now, 
yesterday was lovely, I had such an amazing night. Tom and I did also go out for a meal to Prezzo, which is an Italian restaurant, but I didn't manage to film anything there, unfortunately. We booked a table for about 9 p.m. I think, and we were basically the only people left in the restaurant, so I felt a bit awkward whacking the camera out to film, but that was lovely. I just had a carbonara. I'm quite basic in that way, but it was actually so good. And we came back, had a few drinks outside, and basically stayed there till about one, two in the morning, which is why I'm not looking the best right now. I'm honestly not too sure what the plans for today are. I don't think there are many, to be fair. Like I said, I am just about to go and open my presents, which is always exciting. I'll probably show you guys that as well. I think then we might go to the shops. I'm not too sure. I want to go into Chester, but that might be happening tomorrow now because it's quite a gloomy day. And so it might be nice for us all to just be together whilst we can. Probably play some games as well, so I'll try and get some footage of that. But otherwise, I think it's just a pretty chill day. Also, I will say, I know this vlog is going to be quite heavy on the B-roll footage and the montages, but honestly, I'm trying to be in the moment at the minute as much as I can, and so I don't want to whack out my camera and film, especially my family as well. I don't know if they want to be filmed or anything like that, so I'll try and film where I can. But I feel like this is going to feature a lot of B-roll, so sorry about that. I can't believe I'm 22 guys, honestly. It doesn't quite feel like my birthday as well and I don't know why. I don't know if it's because everyone seems to be quite busy or maybe it's the fact that as you get older your birthday's not as big of a thing. I'm not sure but yeah it's a weird feeling but honestly I'm like I said I'm just having the nicest time. I've had such amazing gifts which I'm sure you will have seen and you probably will see in the next footage as well and I just feel spoiled so yeah. <laughs> I did also want to film a birthday unboxing video but to be honest with you guys I've opened the majority of my gifts by now. The ones that arrived at my house at least because obviously as you can see we're quite all over the place we're between two houses and I thought it would just be easier to open them as I received them so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna film a separate birthday book haul and that's where I'll be featuring the books that I got and the gifts that I received from some of you lovely guys so yeah keep an eye out for that I just thought it would be a bit less stressful and of course I wanted to open the presents as soon as possible so yeah I decided I'm gonna do a birthday book haul so definitely keep your eyes peeled subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss it and click the bell icon as well because that will actually give you a notification when the video goes live. Right, I feel like I've rambled on for a while now. Sorry if I'm talking a bit quietly. My family are all about the house and I just feel a bit self-conscious vlogging. <laughs> not gonna lie. Still not quite over that yet. But I just cannot see what today's gonna bring. And I'm honestly just feeling the love and feeling super excited. So yeah, without further ado, let's just get on with the day. It's sunny at the most days You'll never see the sky if you keep looking down And if you take the wrong way And maybe you should stay instead of turning around So, but you keep on going I know okay because as you can see I'm in a shed my mum actually has her own little room <laughs> 
outside in this shed. I say my mum, it's basically used for everyone now. This is where I actually slept last night with Kiwi and it is actually really nice and it's a good place to just come for a bit of peace and quiet as well. Aside from that though, I thought I should update you guys because as you can probably tell, a lot of time has passed since yesterday. I had the nicest day, honestly guys. Just being able to be with my family and having a good time meant the absolute world to me. We didn't really go hard on the celebrations, I think we just wanted to be together as a family and celebrate my birth. <laughs> But as you saw, we had a barbecue, we had a few drinks, we had a games night, of course. But yeah, all in all, it was such a lovely day. Thank you to everyone as well who sent me any birthday messages. It really did mean the world and it made me smile. So a big, big thank you to all of you. As you can see though, I am dressed now. I've got my makeup on and that is because Tom and I have decided to go into Chester for the day. It is Sunday, so we probably won't stay there too long. It's about half 11 now anyway and shops close at four on Sundays. So yeah, we probably won't stay there past around three o'clock clock I want to say but we've decided to go I'm definitely going to go into Waterstones I'm in a treat yourself kind of mood and so I definitely feel like I will be buying some books apart from that though I'm not sure where else we're gonna go I know we want to go for food but I'm not sure if Hickory's is fully booked yes I didn't book it because I wasn't too sure what we were actually doing this weekend so we're gonna try and see if we can just walk in there if not we'll just have to go somewhere else so we'll see but that is basically the plan for today and then I think we're gonna go home pretty soon after leaving Chester just because we've got work tomorrow. It's an hour's drive away and the weather is really hit and miss at the minute. It's sunny right now but we've just had torrential rain and it's that type of weather where it's really hot but you don't know if you should take a coat just in case because if you get caught in a storm it's obviously going to soak you through so I'm not sure. I'm debating whether to take a coat or not but I think we might be okay. Those might be famous last words, I don't know. But yeah, that is the plan for today. I'm hoping it won't be too busy in town and that will be kind of easy to get everything we need and go around a few shops. I don't actually think I'm gonna go into the big Primark in Chester, just because I did go to Primark yesterday in Broughton. There weren't much things there, to be honest with you. I just went in to get a few essentials, so socks. I think I got a pair of shoes for work, a photo frame for a photo that my friend bought me, and cotton pads, I think, for my face. I think that's all I bought and that's all I really need. I went in there for those things and so I'm basically sorted now which is good. So I think I'm gonna avoid there. It does also cause me stress so the less stress I have the better I will feel. And other than that we don't have much more planned. We might wander a bit around Chester. We might just go to the shops we want to go to and come home. We'll see. I think we're gonna just take it easy, see where the day takes us. But other than that I feel like it's gonna be a really nice day and of course I will take you guys with me. Said it in the heat of the moment, but did you say what you mean? Yeah, your fist turned rabbit and your body was frozen. Think I could hear your heartbeat? Ding out your chest and your sweat and your palms just won't rest for a second. You'll regret it. Almost wanna take it back, but it's too late. Cause you said it. I hope you meant it. Don't be embarrassed, no Baby, it ain't just you just like that I'm back home. It's the next day now as you can probably tell and I thought it would be perfect to close out this vlog with a book haul. As I mentioned in the last clip and as you will have seen in the b-roll footage I did go into Chester with Tom mainly just to go to Waterstones to be honest with you. I feel like there aren't a lot of shops in Chester now that I really enjoy going to except for Waterstones and even that's not the biggest one it's just one of the closest ones to me that has a bit more of a selection than your average smaller store and I was honestly in such a treat yourself 
off mood and I decided you know what it's my birthday technically it wasn't anymore but who cares it's my birthday I want to treat myself and so I did you know I haven't done that in such a long time where I've gone into Waterstones and picked up a load of physical books but it was just a really nice time I find it so calming to go into there the worker as well did come up to me and offered me some recommendations because he'd seen that spoiler alert I did have a few Agatha Christie books in my pile and so he sort of pointed a few books out to me which has never happened to me before but I really did like that experience and it's just really nice to hear other people talk about books that they enjoy or to get some recommendations from someone who sort of knows what I would like based on the books that I had in my hands. As you can see I've got two big bags here I think I'm just gonna start with this one there's no real order to this I just thought it would be fun to show you guys what I bought and so the first book that we have is This Poison Hearts by Kaylin Bayron. I do have Cinderella is Dead by this author. I haven't read it yet but this just caught my eye straight away especially the spine as well it's like neon green which is beautiful and it just sounds amazing so it says to break an ancient curse she must let her power bloom briseis has a gift she can grow an apple tree from a seed in a heartbeat and flowers bloom at her touch and when she inherits an old house she suddenly has the privacy to test her powers for the first time but as Bree starts to magic the house's rumbling grounds back to life she finds she has also inherited generations of secrets in a hidden garden overgrown with the most deadly poisonous plants on earth a dark legacy lies waiting for her and Bree's long departed ancestors won't let her rest until she finds it. So yeah, the cover first caught my eye and then as soon as I read the synopsis I knew I just had to pick it up and as you can see it does have a buy one get one half price sticker and I had to take advantage of that, you know? So definitely keep an eye out for more of these stickers on the books. Next up I got Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie in this beautiful edition. I've never seen this one before. The one I've seen has always had a red sort of cover but this was actually on a table and that's what makes me think that this is a newly printed design and if you know me at all you know that blue is my favourite colour and I do love gold and silver foiling. This one does have gold all over and hieroglyphics as well around it. And it just caught my eye and I thought it was just absolutely beautiful. I have also read this book and know that I really do love it. So I finally decided to pick up a nice copy of it because if you don't know, I am slowly collecting Agatha Christie's books. In this edition, it has the little Poirot logo on the spine there. And I'll just grab you the old one that I have, which is this one. And I don't know if you can tell, it's quite a bit shorter. So if I put them like that, you can see that there's quite quite a bit of difference and even though I love this original cover I just think this one is beautiful I could not leave it there and that is essentially why it's part of this book haul if you don't know what this book is about it is a murder mystery following detective Hercule Poirot and it just says on the back a cruise down the Nile on a river streamer sounds like the perfect way to get away from it all but the tranquil darkness of an Egyptian evening can change fast when the air is thick with hot passions and cold malice temperatures rise when the first passenger is shot and Hercule Poirot must abandon the mystery of ancient Egypt and focus on altogether deadlier matters. I love this. If you don't know, I'm obsessed with Egypt and Egyptology, everything like that. I have done since I was younger and I feel like the genres of books I tend to read from don't really focus on Egypt at all. So to have a murder mystery by one of my favourite authors set in one of my favourite places is just bound to be a favourite of mine and it is. I believe I gave this one five stars. Absolutely loved it and I would highly recommend. Next up, we have The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. You can probably tell that this is a show Sherlock story and I feel like this is one of the most famous ones. It's definitely the one I've heard about the most but saying that I've never actually read it and so again when I saw it there I just had to pick it up. I did buy A Study in Scarlet a while ago now in this edition. If you don't know these are the Penguin English Library editions. I am slowly collecting them. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah there they are but they are beautiful and again when I saw this one there I was just in that type of mood you know I fancied a short murder mystery and this is one of the most famous ones so what more could I want to be honest with you. For this one it says when when Sir Charles Baskerville is found dead in the grounds of his country house, his face contorted with fear, Holmes is drawn into a mysterious case involving an ancient family curse, savage brutality, and a hellish spectral hound that roams the foggy moors. But is it really something unearthly that walks there? So not only is this a murder mystery, it sounds more supernatural as well. And even though I've watched Sherlock and it's one of my favourite TV shows, it's been that long since that I can't quite remember what actually goes on in this, and I don't think the show follows that closely to this. I might be wrong, but basically I don't have any idea what this book is about or what goes on so I wanted to pick it up and dive into it with a fresh set of eyes and I feel like it's one that I will read very very soon. Next up we have a beast of a book and that is this collection of Agatha Christie Miss Marple short stories. I don't think they're all Miss Marple mysteries because it does say and mystery there and I feel like we couldn't have this big of a book just focused on Miss Marple but this is one I've been after for so long but I just kept putting it off. I don't know why I just felt like I'd rather buy the original stories like the full novels rather 
rather than a set of short stories because I'm not too keen on short stories normally. They never tend to be the books I gravitate towards, but like I said, I've been looking for this for a while. Haven't been able to find it online, especially on Amazon. I don't think it's stocked there anymore. So when I saw it in person, I just caved. I have picked it up there once or twice before and put it back down, but I just couldn't leave it, you know, and I've almost finished my Miss Marple books now. I love that set of mystery books so much, and honestly, I just wanted to have this one in my collection. I will probably make my way through these ones very slowly, not gonna lie. Like I said, I would prefer to read a full novel of her, so I am gonna try and tackle those first, but if I'm ever in the mood for a short story, or if I eventually finish all of her titles, I will turn to this one, and I do want to get the one for Poirot as well. And the last one in this bag is The Black Hawks by David Bragg. I honestly feel like I've been seeing this book everywhere recently, and I think it's because the second book has actually just come out, or is maybe being released soon, I can't quite remember, but I did actually look at the second one and realise that it was the second one and that I needed to get to this one, and I've had it on my Amazon wish list, but again, when I saw it in Waterstones, I thought, do you know what, it sounds interesting, I've been meaning to pick it up eventually, why not just pick it up now? So, that is what I did. Plus, the art on this is absolutely stunning, so that was definitely something else that drew me to this book. For this one, it says, Life as a knight is not what Vedran Chell imagined. Bound by oath to a dead-end job in the service of a lazy step-uncle, Chell no longer dreams of glory, he dreams of going home. When invaders throw the kingdom into turmoil, Chell finds opportunity in the chaos. If he escorts a stranded prince to safety, Chell will be released from his oath. All he has to do is drag the brat from one side of the country to the other, through war and wilderness, chased all the way by ruthless assassins. With killers on your trail, you need killers watching your back. You need the Black Hawk Company. Mercenaries, fighters without equal, a squabbling, scrapping pack of rogues. Prepare to join the Black Hawks. And it just says here, dark, thrilling, and hilarious, the Black Hawks is an epic adventure perfect for fans of Joe Abercrombie and Scott Lynch. This just sounds absolutely amazing. I feel like it's one that I'm really going to enjoy. I haven't picked up a fantasy book in a while, actually, aside from Robin Hobb's book, so I feel like this would be a really good one to dive into. Also, I feel like my stepdad would really enjoy this, so maybe when I finish it, I will give it to him to read. We'll see. But that is the last book in that bag. Moving on, though, we still have this one. So the first book in that bag is The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. This is definitely one of the more famous mysteries by her. It's another one in which we follow the detective Hercule Poirot, and the premise of this one is just phenomenal, so I will read you the back because I feel like I can never do a good job in telling you what these books are about, but it does just say, murder is a very simple crime, but at the hands of a maniac, a serial killer, it becomes a very complicated business. With the whole country in a state of panic, the killer is growing more confident with each successive execution. Mrs. Asher in Andover, Betty Barnard in Bexhill, Sir Carmichael Clark in Churston. But laying a trail of deliberate clues to taunt the proud Hercule Poirot might just be his first mistake. So yeah, in this one, the killer basically goes after people whose initials follow the alphabet, and I believe, like it says in the synopsis, that those people are also killed in a city that matches that letter of the alphabet. So the premise just sounds really interesting. I have seen the ITV adaptation for this one and really did enjoy it, but it's been quite a while now and I'm not sure how similar they're gonna be, so I'm definitely excited for this one. However, I won't be getting to this for a while because, as I've said before, I've almost finished the Miss Marple murder mysteries and then I'm moving on to Poirot and this is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This is the thirteenth book in the Poirot mysteries, so definitely a long way to go before I reach this one and I would like to read them in order, but again, when I saw it, I just knew I had to add it to my collection. I am slowly building my Agatha Christie collection up. I have quite a few of her books now and I'm definitely proud of the collection I have so far, but these are definitely the types of books where if I pop into Waterstones I will buy one or two, just because I don't trust buying them anywhere else in case I get sent the wrong editions. So that's essentially why I bought this one, but I'm very excited to get to it and once I buy the books that come before this one, I can make my way through them. Next up we have The Appeal by Janice Hallett. This is one I've never heard of before, but it was on a table in Waterstones and I'd actually picked this book up when one of the staff in Waterstones came up to me and said, oh, I see you've got Agatha Christie books in your hands. This one would be perfect for you. So I was sort of interested in it anyway, and when he came over and recommended this to me, I, again, knew that I had to have it. Not only that, the synopsis sounds amazing, and this book is actually in sort of mixed media. I don't know if you can see that, but it's told in emails. I think it's told in texts as well. 
So it's really interesting and I feel like it's going to be fun to read from this type of book. So you can probably see there how it's set out. And I feel like I'm just gonna have a really fun time with it. For this one, it says, one murder, 15 suspects. Can you uncover the truth? There is a mystery to solve in the small town of Lockwood. It starts with the arrival of two secretive newcomers and ends with a tragic death. Roderick Tanner, QC, has assigned law students Charlotte and Femi to the case. Someone has already been sent to prison for murder, but he suspects that they are innocent. And that far darker secrets have yet to be revealed. Throughout the amateur dramatic society's disastrous staging of All My Sons and the shady charity appeal for a little girl's medical treatment, the murderer hid in plain sight. Will Charlotte and Femi solve the case? Will you? That synopsis alone should tell you why I could not leave this book on the table at Waterstones. I feel like it's going to be such an interesting read, but it is really chunky, so I'm intrigued to see how it's all done, especially in the fact that it's all, I think, told in correspondence. And yeah, this is another page actually that I've just seen that has these sort of text bubbles there so it's all told in that sort of way and I just feel like it's going to be a really strange book to read but a really good one so hopefully I can get to it soon and I will let you guys know my thoughts on it. Next up we have The Killings at Kingfisher Hill by Sophie Hanna and this is the new Hercule Poirot novel from what I can gather. It does have the little detective on the spine and this is one that I've actually seen around quite a few times but I've just never been interested in picking it up. You can probably tell though that I'm on a bit of a murder mystery kick at the minute and so when I saw this one I gave the synopsis a read and decided it was finally time to pick it up. So on the back it says Hercule Poirot has been invited to the exclusive Kingfisher Hill estate to help defend someone who has already confessed to murdering Frank Devonport. To get there he must endure a journey by coach which is interrupted by a woman who is convinced that another death is imminent. Later a body is discovered with a macabre note attached. Could this new murder and the incident on the coach be clues to who really killed Frank Davenport? And can Poirot solve the mystery in time to save an innocent person from the gallows. So I don't actually know if this is based off of Agatha Christie's notes or anything like that or if Sophie Hannah just wanted to continue the Poirot series in a way. If you do know, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to know. I do know that my friend Emily from Emily Kathleen Reads read this one recently so I might reach out to her and ask her what she thought of it and maybe if she knows why there's a new Poirot novel coming out. But like I said, I finally caved when I saw this one and I think I'm going to read this one soon because I don't count this as being an Agatha Christie classic because it's not. It's been written by an author that is an Agatha Christie. So I feel like it doesn't really follow the order of the series and I think it will be okay for me to just dive into this one and experience it as a standalone mystery. And then you'll be pleased to know, guys, that we have finally made it to the last book and that is The Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thorogood. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't actually know. I'm so sorry. Again, would you believe it? Another murder mystery book. This one was actually right next to this one. And so that's what sort of drew me into it to start off with. It does also have a similar spine where there is a silhouette of a person there as well. So I was really intrigued and decided to pick it up. For this one, it says on the back actually, Agatha Christie with a modern twist. And then it says, to solve an impossible murder, you need an impossible hero. 77 year old Judith Potts is blissfully happy. She lives alone in a faded mansion in Marlow, sets crosswords for the times, and there's no man in her life to tell her what to do or how much whiskey to drink. One evening, while out swimming in the Thames, Judith witnesses a brutal murder. When the local police don't believe her story, Judith and two unlikely friends decide to investigate for themselves. Together, they are the Marlowe Murder Club. But soon, another body turns up, and it seems like a real-life serial killer is at work. Now the puzzle they set out to solve has become a trap from which they might never escape. Another one that just sounds so good. To be honest, this really does remind me of The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I haven't actually read that yet. I did start it, but it was a buddy read, and the person I was buddy reading it with, who is Rachel from Rachel Keris, wasn't really feeling it at the time and so we decided to put it down for a bit but it definitely gives me that sort of vibes it has the same sort of colors on the cover I feel like the premise is quite similar and well in which we have an older character trying to solve a murder and again it has the sticker saying buy one get one half price and I think I needed an extra book in order for that deal to actually work and so I decided to go for this one so these are all the books I picked up in Waterstones for my birthday like I said I was in a treat yourself kind of mood but I'm not mad about it I'm so glad that I have all of these in my collection now honestly not sure when I'll get to some of these but other ones I definitely will prioritize. Also please do let me know if you've read any of these and if you have please let me know your thoughts as well. I always love chatting to you guys in the comments and it really does help me to prioritize some books more than others if you let me know your opinions on them. Right I am gonna put these down now because they are heavy and I think I'm going to end this vlog here. Once again I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you who reached out to me wishing me a happy birthday, all of you who sent me gifts. You really didn't have to but it did mean the absolute world to me. I will be posting a birthday 
birthday book haul very soon as well so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. I do also want to say a massive thank you to my family and to Tom. You guys made my birthday really special and you mean the world to me so of course if I get to spend it with you it's going to be a good time. Other than that though I am going to leave this vlog here. Please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. Thank you so so much for watching. It truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!